So, Alexander the Great, one of the most famous figures in ancient history, was apparently a big fan of one summer treat beloved by many to this day. Marco Polo, the Italian explorer and writer, is said to have brought back from Asia a recipe resembling sorbet, a frozen dessert made by mixing sugar-sweetened water with different types of flavoring. This dessert, which was later named cream ice, was a frequent treat at the court of Charles I of England in the 17th century. In France, it was Catherine de' Medici who introduced the beloved frozen dessert soon after she married Henry II. The frozen treat became available for the general public somewhere in the 1660s, when a Sicilian man blended milk, cream, butter, and eggs at Café Procope, the first known café in Paris. Thomas Jefferson himself had a preferred recipe for ice cream, which took a staggering 18 steps to complete. Ice cream has become so important in popular culture that it even has its own laws and regulations to accompany it, to make sure ice cream is always produced with its certain levels of quality. Not every frozen dessert you see out there is, in fact, ice cream. To be commercialized under this name, the Icy Delight needs to contain a minimum of 10% dairy milk fat and mustn't weigh less than 4.5 pounds per gallon. Genuine ice cream doesn't actually need to be too fluffy. In technical terms, that means it must have no more than 100% overrun. So, to get to that specific texture we've all come to know and love, the ice cream base needs to be sufficiently whipped, but only to a certain percentage. Specifically, for every gallon of ice cream base, the end products must not exceed 2 gallons after whipping. Your favorite summer dessert can yet again be broken down into many other subcategories, like reduced-fat ice cream, low-fat ice cream, or non-fat ice cream, based on, what do you think, fat percentage. To have a solid idea of what you're ordering each time, it's best to look at the nutritional information of each product. One interesting type of frozen dessert is gelato. Although it literally translates to ice cream in Italian, there are differences between the two again based on regulations on milk fat content. Gelato normally has less milk fat than ice cream officially should have, but since it has a low overrun, about 20 to 30 percent, the end result is still dense and rich in texture. The Italians also mention that gelato shouldn't have less than 3.5 percent of fat. If this doesn't seem complicated enough, the French also bring their own twist to the dessert. French ice cream, also known as frozen custard, apart from the standard ingredients, also needs to have eggs added to the mixture, with no less than 1.4% egg yolk. You've probably mislabeled many other food items, like say raspberries, as they're actually a member of the rose family, along with cherries, apricots, plums, pears, apples, peaches, or blackberries. They are added to this category based on their flowers. They bloom in five equal petals arranged around a central core. Bananas are considered berries, while strawberries aren't since they belong to the same rose family. We also share about 50% of our DNA with bananas, which explains why both bananas and certain attractive people can both have appeal. Another common misconception, white chocolate isn't actually chocolate since it doesn't contain any chocolate solids. It's made only from a mixture of sugar, milk products, vanilla, lecithin, and cocoa butter. Parents all over the world don't try to convince their kids to eat broccoli for no reason. On a calorie-by-calorie -calorie basis, it turns out that broccoli has nearly as much protein in it as a steak. Now, I'm not convinced parents actually know that, but given the low-fat content, broccoli has many other health benefits as opposed to meat. We now see it as the mandatory companion for fries, but at some point in time, ketchup was actually considered to have healing properties. In the 1880s, a doctor based in Ohio indicated that tomatoes could help treat digestive issues, publishing a ketchup-like formula that was later transformed into a pill. Hey, you want to have a pill with those fries? Speaking of french fries, it turns out one of the most popular side dishes in the world isn't actually French. Potatoes served this way actually originated in Belgium, but they're called that because of how they're cut. And maybe also because the name Brussels sprouts was already taken. I'm almost certain there's a jar of peanut butter somewhere in your cupboard. But I'll bet you didn't know how valuable it actually was. And I'm not talking about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. 
Studies have shown that Americans go through enough peanut butter to coat the floor of the Grand Canyon each year. Just to be a bit more precise here, that's about 500 million pounds. Hey, if somebody did that on YouTube, I'd watch. The pink coloring of salmon isn't always like that by default. Wild salmon is pink due to a large amount of shrimp they consume natively. Farm-raised salmon, however, is generally white, so producers need to add plant-based pigments to get that light pink hue. Carrots weren't originally orange either. The red-yellow tint we are now familiar with comes from a genetic mutation of the well-known vegetable that occurred somewhere in the 16th century. Carrots were initially white or purple. Just like you add ketchup to the side of fries, you're most likely having a dab of wasabi with every plate of sushi. Well, it's most certainly dyed horseradish. The Japanese alternative to horseradish is quite expensive. That's why 99% of restaurants in the U.S. actually use regular horseradish instead. You may see them packed together in the supermarket, but red, green, and yellow peppers aren't actually the same vegetable. You'd need different types of seeds to be able to grow them individually, as they're each their own type of plant species. Did you know one in four hazelnuts ends up in a Nutella jar? The creamy spread is so popular that scientists are looking into ways to grow hazelnuts in labs to counteract the global shortage. That's something to think about when you ask for an extra topic. Sure, there's an expiration date on each bottle of water, but the water itself doesn't actually expire. The date mentioned there is, in fact, for the bottle itself, since the plastic can eventually leak harmful substances into the water. Ever wondered why airplane food sometimes tastes bland? The chef may not always be to blame. The altitude you're flying at has some effects on your body chemistry, making you taste things differently. You've added it to a salad at least once, but you may be surprised to know that cilantro and coriander are not, in fact, the same thing. Coriander is what the dried seeds are called, while the leaves and the stems go by cilantro. So now you know. For all the fruit lovers out there, scientists came up with a fruit salad tree. Yep, that's right, a tree that can grow different types of fruit at the same time. They were developed in Australia and can support up to six different types of fruit. There's a stone fruit variation that features peaches, plums, nectarines, apricots, and peach cots, and a citrus variation for those who prefer lemons, limes, mandarins, oranges, or even tangelos, pomelos, and grapefruits. You most likely avoid it because it can give you bad breath. But garlic is considered one of the most nutrient-dense foods out there. A single clove of garlic can contain 2% of your vitamin B6 the whole day. Studies have shown that the chemical that gives garlic its distinctive flavor, called allicin, is good for your health. The only type of food that never spoils when stored properly is honey. Or at least, the only one we've discovered so far. That's because it contains a high amount of sugar and has a low moisture content. An enzyme created by bees also helps do the trick, as it can suppress any bacterial growth. Of course, if you store your honey the wrong way and expose it to additional moisture, it can go bad. But honey that is sealed and stored correctly technically has no expiration date. Now, if you're just starting out with your cooking skills, you'll be pleased to know mushrooms can't be overcooked. That's because they contain a polymer called chitin. This chemical allows them to remain tender, even if you cook them from a few minutes to up to an hour. Hey, just add some butter and garlic. Nobody will ever know.